when you wrote that infamous um, letter to Mr. Ranul Vikramasinghe, you were actually quite respectful as well in your tone, but um, you were then suspended from the UNP, and I believe you had some disciplinary action taken against you. So would you mind just um, reminding our audience of your, your thought process and um, why you decided to go against the lead of the UNP at the time? In the letter that I addressed to him, but before I get back on the letter, I'll tell you what really drove me to do that. Um, I was not supported by anyone other than Mangala Samaravira um, to become the mayor of Veligama. But it was all based on meritocracy. I had received 87% of the total vote. Even though the Pohutua list was rejected at that election, the rest of the UMP guys who contested with me were on averages of 40 to 47%. I had beaten all, the, all of them by 30% and I had become, I had got 87%. I had got 1,100 or something out of 1,300 votes, right? And I, and, and what was told to us before the election was that whoever gets the highest percentage will be in the contention to be the chairman or the mayor. So at that time, um, Mr. Sagal Ratnayaka, he was the district leader, he was the deputy district leader of Matar, he opposed it. Lots of others opposed it and it was only Mangala who spoke on my behalf and I was right there when he made a few phone calls. He said, look, we need Rehan, we need someone uh, with uh, the English speaking background that he has to handle a tourism zone like Valigama. And also he has won the election. So please make him chairman. So Mr. Vikram Singh was very reluctant to do it. Mm. And but when Mr. Samarvira uh, gave me that position, I accepted it with humility and I did the best of my abilities. But then what happened later was that I started seeing this governance system of which what he had. I started seeing the deals that they pulled to get people out of the, uh, to get people out of trouble. So that's why one, my main contention now is there is no point blaming the Rajapakshas for what they did post 2015 because 2015 the people of this country gave opportunity to Mr. Vikram Singh and Maitri Parasiri Sena to rid the country of them or to really go after them but they didn't do that and it's not something that I may be able to prove in court but I'm saying this in front of a camera now without any parliamentary privileges uh, you know um, protecting me. So anyone can uh, is free to take me to court. But there were underhand deals that were being cut. Uh, so I started seeing all of this. Then I started, then I saw the bond scan and how obviously uh, complicit um, uh, the rulers were with that crime. How Mr. Vikram Singh, the president now bought a Singaporean national who was not even a Sri Lankan dual citizen because Singaporeans can't be dual citizens. So knowing full well that if something goes wrong that Mr. Arjuna Mahindran can leave the country, Mr. Vikram Singh brought him down and made him a central bank governor amidst criticisms from everyone, all, almost everyone in our camp as well. He still went ahead and he did that. So that kind of started making me feel a little bit of animosity. But what really triggered me uh, was the Easter Sunday attack. Because I honestly, that's one day where I honestly got sick of politics. Because here was intelligence reports coming in from India that there is going to be a terror attack. And we have two rulers who are angry at each other. So one ruler, the prime minister decided, oh, look, I'm not going to go for the security council. Right. But the security council, but what his response was that he was not invited by uh, President Sirisena. Now, what do you do as the prime minister if you're not invited? You raise the issue in parliament. You raise a matter of privilege in front of the speaker. And you say, constitutionally, I am... Uh, obliged to go for this and he has not been inviting me, why can't I go? Yeah. But then he didn't go for six months and neither did he tell anyone that he's not going for the Security Council. Yeah. And this created an even bigger rift between the President and the Prime Minister. And this resulted in intelligence reports not being paid enough attention to and the Easter Sunday attack happened. Then I finally fixated my mind and at that time, uh, the whole Sajid Premadas uprising was already happening in our party. There were lots of members including uh, members like Mangal Samarvira who were, who were very vocal about it, but didn't put it out to the public. But then about a month later after the Easter Sunday attack, I thought enough is enough. And Kusum, I want everyone to read that letter what I sent Mr. Vikram Singh. Yes, yes. In that letter, I have called him a very smart man. And I have also said that he had two golden opportunities uh, to win elections. One was in 2000, but unfortunately because of the terror attack carried out on uh, CBK, the former president, uh, she received some sort of sympathy vote and he lost. Yes. But then the UMP again gave him a chance. And this was in 2005. And in 2005, again, he was well poised 
um, to become victorious, but the North and East votes were stopped, ironically by the same people that Mr. Vikram Singh has joined hands with now. Um, the North and East vote was lost and um, he lost the presidency. But in my letter I say, sir that is where your time ends. Because I think to win in politics you got to be 50 percent or 60 percent lucky and 40 percent you got to, it, it has to be on your skill level. But in 2005 because of the fact that he, not, he assumed the mantle in 1994, it was already uh, 10 plus years since he's become the leader of the UMP. Right. And we've lost multiple elections. There was not a single election that we won after he became leader. Yeah. So I thought this was the best time for him to give up. And in my opinion at that time, he should have given it to Karu Jayasuriya. Because by that time, Karu was already a rising star in the UMP. Yeah. He had become the Colombo mayor. And Mr. Vikram Singh started a witch hunt against him and then knew that if he's in Colombo, it will be disastrous for him. So sent him to Gampa, mm -hmm. where he'll have to where he'll have to compete with Andhra Bandar Naik. He made life very difficult for him. That's what led to Mr. Jayasuri leaving the party. Yes. yes. And in 2005 was when people started calling for a leadership change. So in my letter, I said, this is the time you should have given it, but now your time is up because you have um, you have people like Sagal Ratnaika around you who, do, who doesn't make your life any much easier when it comes to interacting with the common man of the country. And I said, now is the time that you need to leave. And I said, please play a role in this party, but make Sajid Premadasa uh, your candidate. And if you feel that you cannot give it to Sajid Premadasa, I have also mentioned in that letter that you can give it to Karu. So uh, it, the way he took it was what surprised me. Right. I was immediately called by the general secretary, Akhil Viraj Karivasam. I was asked to give an explanation and I said, I'm not going to give explanations on the phone. If you want to ask me something, you ask me to come to the party office and make me sit in front of you and I'll give you my answers. So within four days, my party membership was suspended. And Kusum, I was the, 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 in that mayoral election, there were only two bodies that the UMP got in the entire southern district. That is Valigama and Tangol. Ravindu Adarachi from Tangol and myself from Valigama. He decided to suspend me. He got all my council members to work against me. I had extreme difficulty passing budgets, my annual budgets, but I always got them done. And there was not a single allegation of corruption or bribery against me. And if someone can find any allegation of bribery against me while I was the chairman of the Valley Urban Council, I will give up politics because I know for, for a fact there was nothing of that sort. But then the way they reacted, they suspended me. They almost, they, then they expelled me, right? Um, uh, they tried to take away certain, uh, b b b certain uh, development projects that were coming into the uh, uh, Valigama Urban Council, they were pressurizing Mangala Samaravira to try and stop these development projects. And um, when the general election time came, I had no choice but to contest from the SJB. But how can a leader who is also part of the International Democratic uh, Association or Union in the world, who is an official member, how can he preach democracy to the people of this country if he started? as the UMP leader in 1994 and he is still the UMP leader. He has still not given it to a second generation. So how can you trust a man and, and, and his recent policy statement in parliament? Kusum, you would have realized when he started talking about the youth. How can you talk about the youth of the country when you have completely diminished the youth factions in the United National Party? Yes. Where there is no second tier, there is no third tier. Yes. Yes. Every, every, everything is based on one man. All things considered, Rahan, though, when you wrote that letter to uh, the, Mr. Ranul Vikram Singh, huh, you were taking a risk, yes. right? And when the decision was taken by many prominent members of the UNP to join with Sajid Premadas and form a new party, the SJB, um, especially for someone like you who's, who was fairly young uh, in, in the process and you were just coming up, you came up in the UNP. So to give up that kind of a risk and to join with Sajid Premadas, you must have had a fair amount of faith in the organization that Mr. Premadas and the other prominent politicians from the UNP were building. So could you just give us some idea of what drove you? If you can that? find me one politician in the local government level with far reaching powers of that what you have when you're a mayor or a chairman, if you can find me one politician who threw it all on the line in the belief of one man, 
again, I am willing to take back what I said. But I did all that Kusum knowing full well that Sajid Premadas is the person that can lead us out of this mess that we are in. Right? But they denied him nominations. They refused to let him contest under the elephant. They almost forced us to go and be part of Ravi Karanayaka's party. And because of the fact that we didn't trust that political machinery is why we went and formed the telephone. Right? That is how it happened. It was done because we had no choice. And if you remember what Mr. Vikramasinghe did to Mr. Premadasa, ten day, two days before postal voting, he made a public announcement on Dirana. Yes. It doesn't matter who is the president, I will still be the prime minister. And mind you, that was still with the 19th Amendment. Yes. That was still with the 19th Amendment. Yes. So our voter bank was worried. Our voter bank thought, what is the point of voting for Sajid? if this man is still going to be at the helm. And because of the fact that he was there from 1994 and didn't show any signs of giving up, that's what the people saw. So it was sabotage from day one. But then the belief that I had in Mr. Premadasa has not even diminished by a little bit. I am still willing to lose multiple elections because of him, because I know that he is the only one who can get us out of this rut. And if you look at the internal democracy within the SJB, the only, I, I have told Mr. Premadasa sometimes, I have told him, you are way too democratic sometimes. I'm, I'm, I, I didn't say that in the hope that he'll be an autocrat or a dictator. But the, the democracy that he gives within the party is unheard of to the working committee. And that is why you get certain members making statements all over the place. It's because he has given them that freedom to do so. But there is also something that these MPs of us have forgotten. A majority of them have forgotten that they won that election because of Sajid Premadasa. Yes. They actually went into parliament because of Sajid Premadasa. And how do I know this? I know this because everyone who contested under Mr. Anil Vikramasinghe lost. Yes. Navin Disanayaka, Akhila Viraj Kaliyavasa, Parita Rangabandara, Parita Tevara Peruma, uh, everyone who stuck by him, they lost their election to a level where it, 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 it's as if they didn't even contest. Their votes are not even counted. Yes. So these MPs have to understand that the only reason they are in power is because of this man. Which is why I think that as a party, we should be, we should be doing so much more to boost up Sajid Premadasa because one man, Kusum, can't do it all. And there are certain ways that I act. Now, if you, if, if you look at the way I went and protested with Hirunika outside the president's house, now I don't expect Mr. Premadasa to do that. And people shouldn't expect him to do that either. But then, there are people around him who should be doing that for him. I am one of them. Hirunika is another. I would say Harsha De Silva is one. General Sarat Fonseca, Eran Vikramaratna, Marika. There, there are a group of people like that. But the entire party of 52, or the group of MPs have to now realize that the only way that this team can win is if this man wins, the lead of the team wins. So sadly, Kusum, I don't see that. I don't see that undying loyalty that they had towards uh, Mr. Vikramasinghe and being an abject failure. I don't uh, see how, how, how it's been applied on Mr. Premadasa. That's